Hello web developers, welcome to the project walkthrough for the templates and data project. Uh, this project is meant to introduce people to the way that Vue.js templates work and uh, generally covers data interpolation, uh, looping, and conditionals along with a couple of other uh, useful features of the Vue.js templating system. So uh, we're going to begin this project like we begin all of them. We start at the starter repo here in the SU Web Dev uh, GitHub account, and we're going to fork that into our personal account. And once we are done making our own copy of this repository, we can then clone it out. So I'm going to go ahead and clone it out to my working area here. So then I'm going to go into that repository. And of course, because it is a Vue.js project, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom of the readme, I do have the instructions for the build setup still. But hopefully by now, we are starting to memorize these uh, instructions, so we will install all of the dependencies. And now that those are installed, we can uh, run our development environment, but first I'm going to open up this directory in Sublime and make sure that I have that available here. I can look at all the files that, uh, that came with the directory and then now I can uh, run npm run dev and it should open up our website here in our browser window. And there we go. And what we can currently see is that we have a um, we are not specifying the language properly, but what we can currently see is that we have the sort of the placeholder stuff, the static template, just with all of the stuff typed in. And so uh, the goal for this project is to create a list of search results. And so if uh, we can read through the readme here and it tells us about what we're doing, um, and there's also a whole walkthrough in section seven of the Practical JavaScript 2 book. So that'll be linked in the description of this video as well. And, um, and what we've got here is a snippet of data from the movie database, which is a great database that provides API access to, um, provides API access to uh, movie information. And what we have is uh, the first page of search results showing the most popular movies of the 20th century. So if we look in Sublime here, and if we go into source, you can see that there's an API results file, which is just a file that exports an object that is the results that came out of the database. And these results have only been modified in one way. We switched the genre IDs list to just a genres list so that uh, it gives us the name of the genres because it makes our display a little bit nicer without having to do another API call. Um, this is very typical of search result information. We have the page that we're on is page one. We have the total number of results. We have the total number of pages. So we could build out a pagination um, structure just using these three values um, right here. And then, um, and then each of the results is, you know, the results are contained in an array. And then each of these results are a, um, an object which represents a movie. So the first movie here, the most popular movie in the 20th century for the movie database.org is, um, is Fight Club. So there we go. <laughs> um, and notice that we have um, some data in here that's worthwhile to sort of check out. So we have like uh, the vote count, that's how many people have rated the movie. We have the vote average, that's the average rating out of 10. Um, we have um, whether it's a video or whether it's film, if it is kind of what it is if it's not a video. So it's not a video, it's false because this was a film. Um, the ID of the movie in the database, uh, the title of the movie, the popularity of the movie, there's a poster path, so if we use this path combined with the base URL, we can uh, display the poster image. Uh, the original language of the movie, the original title of the movie, 
uh, the backdrop path, and that is a background image, which we can figure out the, uh, the base URL for that, and we can pull in this background image and use it in our styles if we wished. Um, we have a flag whether or not this is an adult film. Uh, none of these are adult films, so um, that is set to false on all of them. And uh, we have an overview here, uh, which is just a description. The description is just a big text string. The original release date in uh, this format, year, month, day format. And then an array of genres, and inside of the array of genres is a set of strings. So there's Fight Club. The next one is Pulp Fiction, and we can see that uh, Pulp Fiction has two genres, thriller and crime, and um, different data, different images, all that stuff. So we want to show all of this data in our templates. And what we have in order to do that is a basic Vue.js application. Uh, the app.view is pulling in the results component. And we can see that the app.view has, has results defined as a component. Um, inside of the components directory, we have the results component. And this is where we're going to do most of our work. So uh, what we have here is in kind of the way that we normally do things, we have a file filled with a bunch of to-dos here. The to-dos basically echo all of those requirements in the readme file. And once you're done with all of these to-dos, you will have created a dynamic template that shows all of the data in this system. So all that data that we were just looking at, we're going to output onto the screen. Um, we can look into the logic of the component here, and it's a very slim component. It doesn't really do anything. All it does is output that API results object to the template context. So that becomes part of the, the component's data object, and that object structure is what is being returned. So um, inside of the template, we can just refer to these parts of the data structure. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this file stays open. And I'm going to open up this results file so that we can look at this because these names at the root, those are the names that are just available. So we could reference page, total results, total pages, just with our mustache syntax. And we could interpolate those values into the template. But then we could also loop through this array. And then inside of the array, we could access these objects and all of these properties as well. So that's, that's basically what we're going to do. And then inside of that loop, we're actually going to make another loop. And we're going to loop through all of the genres. So that's what we're going to start working on. If you're just trying to get an overview of what this assignment is all about, then you've pretty much already seen it all here. And you should be able to just follow along with these basic requirements that are listed in the, um, in the readme file on the project. And then, um, and then what you'll end up with is something that looks pretty much like this with the actual numbers included here. Uh, and then uh, here, this will all be modulated so that it's, it displays properly. And you'll have a result for each of the 20 movies. So you have 20 of these boxes going down the, down the page. Um, so, and then if you feel like it, you can dive into the stretch goals. There are several things that you could do that are, are pretty obvious here. Um, use that backdrop image. Uh, write a filter that allows you to format the release date. There's all kinds of thing, ways that you could expand this. So if you already know something about view templates, then you'll be able to complete the basic requirements very quickly. And you can jump right into doing some stretch goals and getting some additional practice with view templates. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and check out uh, the code. And we'll start working through the project. So if this is a moment where you want to pause the video and go do some work on your own and see how far you can get, uh, now's the time to do that. You are free to watch the video and work along, or you might want to watch the video, see what happens, and then come back and try to do it on your own. Uh, remember that as you complete things in the, in the project, you should remove these to-do comments because at that point they are done, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's go ahead and dive into completing all of this stuff. And I'm just going to work straight through this file off of these to-dos because that pretty much will get us to everything that we need to complete in order to be successful with this project. So the very first thing is fill in the current page value. Well, if we look in the API results, we see that the page value is just called page. So I should be able to just come here and add in page in the mustache syntax, and that should output the page value. I'm going to click back over here, and we can see here that, that the page value is actually 1. So we know that it worked because this page refreshed. We can manually refresh it if we want to. And, um, and it still shows one in spite of the fact that we just switched, excuse me, we switched this to be the value here. So 
that's a little bit odd because we had already put in the default of one. The next one, we noticed that the total results is like 147, 445. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Instead of 777, we put in 147, or not 147, we put in total results like that. That's the name of it. And um, now we should be able to see that the total results has updated. So if we move down here, we can see here, oh, yep, total results here is 147445 just like we expected so that's great and then um, the count is our total pages so we can put total pages in here and and we can just drop it in so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these to do's since we've gotten them all done now and then I will save and we should have all of our proper numbers up at the top of our of our page so that should be one one four seven four four five and seven three seven three let's see they match right there we can see that they match so we've definitely got the data pop piping through no problem let's go ahead and continue uh, filling in this page things are going well so far so the next thing that we have is an unordered list and that's what we're using to contain all of these results we have list items that correspond to each result box and they have the class movie item on there. That's styled down below in the style sheet. Uh, we can see that our to-do here is to use a for loop to iterate through each result in the results array. So we want to actually loop the list item here. So if we just use a v4 directive, we can say for result in results. And I like to name things that way where I use the plural to represent the collection and then the singular. It would also be uh, legitimate, I think, to say uh, movie in results. Uh, that would be fine. And you could pick whatever name you want to use to refer to the item as it goes through the loop. But remember that it just always has to match whatever you specified here. So later on, I can see I need to combine the base URL with the poster path value. And the hint here is that I'm going to use vbind. And so the way that that's going to work is I'm going to bind this source attribute. And so I'm going to say vbind. And so remember that when we bind things, we have to use the double quotation marks in here because uh, we, know that, um, we know that we need to do a little string concatenation. So this is the base u part of the URL. And so we want to put that in a string and then use a plus sign to concatenate that with the value of this poster path. And notice that the poster path begins with a slash. So we don't need to include that slash at the end of the base, but we want that poster path. And the way that we would refer to that poster path is as result dot poster path. Because every, each time through the loop, we're getting one of these objects here. And so this object is going to be called result each time through the loop. And the first time it's going to be Fight Club, and the second time it's going to be Pulp Fiction, and the third time it's going to be Blade Runner. So we know that that's, um, that that's going to be sort of how it loops through. And each time this comes through, this is called result. And so if we wanted to access the poster path property, we say result.posterpath. And that's what we've done right here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Um, the alt tag should also be the title of the movie poster. And so I'm going to use another vbind directive, and I'm going to bind the alt attribute to the title of the movie poster. Now, I don't need to do any string concatenation here, so I can just say result.title, and that will just output the title as the alt tag for this image. And then... Um, and then... I have the class poster image. I don't need to modify that at all. So now that I've done all of this, I should be able to save this and I should see all of our items looping and I should see the posters for each movie as we go down. And that's what I can see here. We see Fight Club and then Pulp Fiction and then Blade Runner, just like we expected. And these are the rest of the movies in the top 20 movies of the 20th century. Again, top 20 most popular, not necessarily top 20 ranked by critics or anything like that. But... Um, but that looks like that's worked really well for us. And so that's super exciting to see already. Now we still don't have all of this information over here filled in. So let's, let's go back to our code and start filling in more information. Um, the next thing that we need to do is output the title. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, add in the title here. 
and that's going to be result.title, just like I used up here in the alt tag. And then I have the href on the link, which needs to use a bind statement again so that I can use the result.id to change the number at the end of this link. That number is the movie ID, and by changing that number, we get the link to the movie's page. So I'm gonna say v bind with my colon, and then the href, and then again, I have to do the string concatenation, so I have to wrap this in a quote, and this time I wanna leave that trailing slash inside of the quotes, because the result.id value is just the integer. So I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna remind you, here's what the ID looks like, it's just the integer. So what we need is to get that number into that URL so that it will um, take us to the right page. So that's what we've done here with this vbind on the href. We've bound that href attribute now is going to process this little JavaScript statement which says combine this string with this value out of our data. And the result here is that we will get the movies. And if you look down at the lower left of the screen, you can see when I hover over them that we can see the different uh, movie links have been modulated properly. And I'm going to hold down command and click so that I open these up in the next tab so that we can just kind of have a quick test. And so we hear, see here Fight Club and Pulp Fiction and Blade Runner. So we're linking properly back to the movie database uh, in order to show the full data for those. So that has worked and we have properly interpolated um, that ID into the link using the vbind directive. So that's excellent. We also have just interpolated the result.title into the um, heading and, and the, the text there. So we're going to go ahead and delete that to do. And the next thing we need to do is actually a really interesting set of conditionals here. So here we're going to use a conditional determine that if the vote average is over eight, then we're going to show we're going to show this critics choice span. Um, and then the next one we show well liked if it's between seven and eight, and then we call it a stinker if it's under seven. That might be a little bit harsh. You can feel free if you want more practice to break this up into even more options. But the way that we do this is we're gonna use the vif uh, directive and the vif directive is going to accept a, um, a conditional statement. So we can say, let's see, the vote average is what this is called. So we wanna say if the vote average, um, vote result, dot vote average. So if the vote average for this result is greater than eight, then we want to show this. And that's all that we need to do. Now that this is here, we'll see critics choice if the result if the vote average is greater than eight. If we just leave it like that, we'll still see the other two. We'll still see well liked and stinker. But what we should be able to see here is that critics choice might have disappeared on some of them. Like right here, critics choice disappeared on Blade Runner and on the Matrix Critics Choice disappeared. So we can see that our conditional is, is helping to turn off Critics Choice when it shouldn't belong. And here we can see the rating is 8.4, so Critics Choice should show. Um, oh, well actually we haven't made that dynamic, so <laughs> that was a silly thing to say. Okay, so let's, let's make all of this data dynamic before we start checking ourselves or getting ourselves confused too much. But we can see that Critics Choice is, is not showing on some of these, so I think it's working pretty well. Let's fill out the rest of this conditional stack and see how it all comes together. So the next thing that we can use is the v else if, and so this one, we only want it to happen if the critic's choice hasn't happened. And so this we could say um, result.vote average is greater than seven, and it should work for well liked. So let's go ahead and save that and we'll see see what happens here. So well liked disappeared from these, but it shows up here. So that is what we want. So Blade Runner we know wasn't a critic's choice. So now we have Stinker shown up on all of them. So we need to make this one dynamic as well. 
And so here on stinker, we can just use the V else. Now, we want the V else to just catch every other condition. So if it, if it wasn't a above a seven and if it wasn't above an eight, then V else is just what's gonna happen automatically. But by using this V else here, we also make sure that we don't show this if these other ones have executed. So this is a, a you know, just like doing a conditional in JavaScript, we have if, else if, and then else in order to um, make our, our ratings show properly. So if we click back over to the browser, now we see critics choice, well liked, and I don't think we have any stinkers in the top 20 movies of um, the 20th century, so that's that's all that we get. But the fact that stinker is not showing tells us that that conditional is actually working properly. Um, so the next part that we need to fill in is actually the number of votes and the vote count. So the vote average and the vote count. So this is a pretty simple just interpolation. We just say result dot vote average, and here we can just say result.vote total, I believe. Let's see, that is, oh, vote count and vote average. So I shouldn't have second guessed it. Okay, there. So now we should be able to see the actual scores here. And so 7.9 is below eight, so that means it's well liked. 8.5 is obviously above eight, so that's a critic's choice. So that is all, um, that is all solid. So the next thing that we need to do is just get all of the uh, information, um, and then and then also build out our genre list. So that's not that's not too tough. Uh, let's get rid of of these uh, to do statements really fast here, and um, and so now we need to fill in the movie overview. That's that's not a problem. So that is just result.overview, I believe. Let's verify that over here. And yep, we can see that that's the overview. And since we're here, let's go ahead and just also drop in the release date. If we double check here, we can see that that's spelled release underscore date. So let's go ahead and pop that in. And then before we do the genres list, let's double check again that we have everything working properly. Um, uh oh, original release didn't show up, but this did. But the overview did show up. Um, so we obviously made a, some kind of. Oh, I see. So this is obviously result dot release date is what it should be. So now if we click here, we can see the release dates popping up right there. So so great. So now the next thing that we need to do is just. Uh, make sure that we have gotten the genre to generate. And so we're gonna use a loop, um, and then we need to make sure that the genre name goes through. So uh, this list item is what we want to loop. So again, we're gonna use a V4, and let's just say genre in um, genres. Is that what this is called? Yeah, it's just called genres. So we'll just make it like that. And then we can just do that, and uh, and this should be dynamic now. So each of these genres is going to come through. It's going to be called genre, and we're just going to output it right there inside the list item, and uh, that should do the trick for us. So we don't actually. It didn't actually work. Um, oh, because of course genres is a part of the result as well. So I should stop making so many silly typos <laughs> in the middle of a video. But what we can see now is that we see each of the, of the genres coming through, and there are some with multiple genres and some uh, that only have one genre. That is all good. We want to be able to accommodate any movie and any list of genres, whatever it is. So, so that is all of the work completed there. So once we're done with this, we can basically um, deploy, well, just commit and deploy all of this up, um, up on, our, on our server. So uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at how to do that. Um, I'm just gonna stop the web server by hitting Command C 
or control C, and then I'm going to run npm run build. And this has already been configured to build into a docs directory. So we should be able to see that it has built everything into the docs folder. And there we go. Uh, we can see our docs folder there. We can uh, run a git status and we can see that we have all of these files all um, that all need to be added. So I'm going to use the big uh, add dash capital A to just sort of recklessly add things. And then I'm going to say git commit dash M finished project. And uh, I'm going to push this up to the origin. And then we can go into our repository page one more time and go into settings here and we can go down to github pages switch this to say the master branch docs folder and save it and that will then allow us to see the url where this will be deplo deployed and it, it takes a few minutes to get these deployed typically um but uh it will it will get deployed <laughs> have no fear if we refresh this page i bet we can see that um it has been published now, uh, so if we click here, we probably, there we go, now we see it there. So, so it is up and running, we could share this online with our friends, and we have a nice little set of search results. If you wanna make it even nicer, get those background um, images in use there to texture those search result boxes, or get um, enhance this pagination um, so that if you were really working with an API call, you could be changing your calls and uh, moving people through the pages of data. But um, there's a lot of things that you can play with. I encourage you to poke around and uh, see everything that you can do. But for now, I believe that we are done here. So have fun uh, playing with Vue.js templates. I look forward to seeing you on the next project. Bye.